These are Holly's artworks. These are AI mimicries of Holly's artworks. How do we know this? Because I've read it user fed an AI model a bunch of her pictures and produced these results with it. They used her name because her art style got good results. How did Holly feel about this? Well at first she didn't even know it was happening, but once she did, she stated how it made her feel just here. She thought AI did a good job of imitating her style in superficial ways, like in the style of the brush strokes and the colours used, but didn't think it got the important aspects right, like the soul of her images. So in a way, she was frustrated her name was being used, but that the results didn't convey her actual style. And she wonders what the people using her name to generate artworks of thought about her. Did they consider her to be a human artist, or merely a tool to get their job done? For Holly, her art is something that's taken time and effort to hone, and something doesn't sit right with her about having her name tied to something that wasn't made by and doesn't represent her. Had they asked for her permission to use her pictures, she wouldn't have given it, and for some of them she wouldn't even have been able to, saying that some of the images they used to train the AI with no longer belong to her, with companies like Disney now owning the rights to them. So even she, the original maker of those images being used, no longer has control over them, yet somehow random people online feel more free to use her own artwork than she is. Holly's story provides many good reasons for why artists do not want their work being used to train AI models with. Even if AI stopped improving today, it will still be a long time before we fully understand the full impact today's technologies will have, so artists are understandably looking for a way to protect their own work from this incredibly disruptive technology. There are now ways for artists to opt out of future training models, but is that enough? Is it okay to use everyone's stuff until they specifically tell you not to? Or should it be the opposite way around, where AI can only use the content of artists who have specifically opted in? And who's to say all training models will comply with these requests anyway? It is the Wild West era for AI right now, and artists may want a more robust form of protection. And one way they can attempt to do this right now is by using tools like Glaze and Nightshade, which cloaks them in a way that corrupts AI that's trained on those images. Glaze is a defensive tool that artists can use to protect their own images. It prevents AI from replicating their art style, and if you try then AI will just produce a nonsense image. Images protected with Nightshade will poison models that are trained on that data. It's more of an offensive tool for artists to use, because it might not prevent AI from imitating artists' styles, but if enough nightshaded images make it into an AI model, then it will corrupt certain requests by turning images of something into something else. So you'd request hats and get cakes, for instance. It's quite an interesting article here, which I'll link to in the description, and it shows some examples of this, like how they've managed to poison requests for dog pictures with cats, to such an extent that, after being fed a few hundred poisoned images, it ends up displaying something that much more closely resembles a cat instead of a dog. Cars become cows, handbags become toasters. However, for the more advanced AI models, they say it will likely require far more poisoned images before the effect becomes apparent. But now this tool is out there, the number of poisoned images AI risks learning from is only going to increase. The Glaze project recommends you run your artwork through Nightshade first, then Glaze last if you want the full benefit of both, but they are working on something that can do both at the same time. Now I've wondered how they can protect an artwork without ruining the original artwork. So it's interesting to see how visible this poisoning of the image appears. So thanks to Sevieta Verushkina, sorry for how I pronounce that, for running their artworks through these tools. Here's a comparison between the original artwork and it after it's been run through Nightshade at fast setting. Once it's been run through, you can make out very distinctive rippling patterns on bits of the image, almost like camouflage patterns. It almost blotches and JPEGs the image up a bit, subtly changing colours in those areas and so on. There's also a slow option, which I presume takes longer to add to the image, but instead of displaying as obvious ripples in just a few spots, it now looks like the whole image has undergone a watercolour filter. It's not particularly subtle, and Glaze isn't either, appearing to smush the entire image in a very JPEGed way. Sure, we can see the differences clearly in before and after such as this one. The real question is, if we only saw the after image, would we notice? And would you even care? And will AI tools be able to detect which images are poisoned? And if so, then will they simply avoid using them? Or are there ways for them to bypass such image defences? These protected images may stop AI from copying the artist's style, but aren't these protection methods also modifying the artist's style? Sure, it'll ruin AI images far more than the original artworks, but is even this still too steep a price to pay? We're talking about having to mask every image we make forevermore, simply to prevent the off chance that an AI-generated image borrows from one of them. Maybe there are ways of lessening the damage on the original artwork. Would the effect be less evident if the image was higher res? Or would the watermark simply have to be more obvious to compensate for this? Sevieta even asked what would happen if they used these tools but only at 50% opacity. Would that even mask the image enough to be effective anymore? 
Well, I can answer that. The more visible the artefacts, the more effective the protection will be. Glaze has done all kinds of surveys, seeing how many visible artefacts artists are okay with, and how effective the defences are at every stage. There is a sweet spot. You really should look through the Glaze PDF on this, link in the description. They even attempt to bypass the protection by JPEGing and blurring the image. But the bit that's relevant to this video is this survey that they carried out on over 1,200 artists, which revealed some heartbreaking statistics. Nearly 90% of artists think AI imagery will discourage new students from studying art, 70% think it will diminish creativity, and about 50% of artists anticipated the need to reduce or to remove their online artwork, and of those, half thought doing this would significantly impact their careers. Given these statistics, the idea of being able to protect online artwork with just minor changes to the image begins to sound like a very appealing alternative. Glaze doesn't mean the art is ruined, merely that the untainted versions remain behind closed doors. Artists don't have to run their private copies of their images through these systems, nor the versions people can purchase. But for anywhere public they may show their work, like online art galleries or previews for potential clients, this kind of cloaking technology could be invaluable. 100% protection against theft isn't the goal here, it's merely to make stealing your artwork for training purposes more effort than it's worth. The people training the big and complex algorithms simply want an easy life. They want easy access to as many untainted images as possible, and tools such as Glaze and Nightshade will eventually force them to rethink their strategy. Rather ironically, I don't think these tools will deter the kinds of people who imitated Holly's artwork in the first place. I suspect for them, it's a hobby. For there's a thrill to fine-tuning an AI model for a particular art style, and they'll go to great lengths to achieve that if it's something that they feel passionate enough about. But I expect the war between artists and AI training algorithms to rage on for quite some time to come, and tools such as Glaze and Nightshade are only the beginning of what will likely become a very elaborate game of cat and mouse. But with this being the internet, I can predict, with about 100% certainty, that some people will take it upon themselves to sabotage all prompts for all AI tools and will begin running all sorts of images through these programs to corrupt every prompt people might want to use. And with Nightshade, it introduces unlimited troll potential, in the form of being able to change innocent prompts into something less family friendly. Instead of mountains, we'll get breasts. Instead of trees, we'll get cocks. Instead of statues, we'll get cocks. Instead of portraits, we'll get cocks. Instead of hens, we'll get cocks. Instead of clocks, we'll get cocks. I don't need to explain why this will happen, you know I'm right.